Welcome to one of the most famous boulevards in all of the United States of America. We are in Miami Beach and we are on Ocean Drive. It is a gorgeous area filled with amazing art deco architecture and I am so hyped to come here. I have been amazed by art deco architecture since I was a little kid growing up in New York City. But I love that art deco has taken its own way of looking here in Miami. And we're going to explore this area of Ocean Drive with an amazing tour guide based over here. Most of those short videos of history bits all around Miami and Miami Beach, uh, Carolina Flores. We're going to meet her very soon. But look at Ocean Drive. It runs along the south, southern part of Miami Beach, South Beach, that is. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist. And let's explore some Ocean Drive. Ooh. I'm so hyped. How do I Let me know if you've been this? to Miami Beach before. I really love the vibes here. The weather's nice and balmy, 87 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Uh, nice and humid and ooh, I'm loving it. I wish I wish I could stay for longer. I'm only here for one day um, more. All right, let's explore. I'm loving it. I wish I wish I could stay for longer. So let me show you a little bit more of the architecture. Oh, look at that. Ah. Hello. Ivan, hello Sylvia, hello John, hello Danielle, hello Isabel, hello Nico, welcome, hello everyone. Din Din says, yes, I've been to Miami Beach. Thomas, hello, nice to see you here. Ivan from Norway, very different vibes from Norway, I can imagine. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. So I'm here with Caro, the tour guide, Carolina <laughs> Flores with a Z. With and, a Z, very important. <laughs> and you've been uh, tour guiding in Florida for a while, in Miami. For yes, a while. for yeah. a while. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it since I was 19. I started right here on 10th and uh, Collins Avenue, very close to where mm. we are right now, was my first ever tour guide gig. And I started as a bike tour guide and a Segway tour guide. Oh, interesting. Segways. Okay, yeah. fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so you were getting the really like fresh off the plane tourists. Yeah, yes, yeah. very much so. Or very, fresh off the boat so. with the cruise yes, ships. Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. The yeah. cruise ship tourists uh, and like all the tourists like that. And I did that for about a year until I started working a hybrid job where mm. I was in the office in sales and management and then half the time doing the tours and it was in a tourism company. And then now I have my own tour company and it's just been a whole wild ride and I've been doing it for a long time. Long story short. <laughs> and then you also do short videos of uh, snippets yeah. of Miami history. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, during the pandemic, okay. obviously, I was laid off and there was no tourism, so I figured, what do I know? What can I do with my time? I've always enjoyed making videos, so I started making videos about Miami's history and, yeah, short snippets of it all. Yeah. All right, let's explore Ocean Drive. Yes. First, people are telling me that this is a different city from Miami. Absolutely, okay. yeah. So it's a very common misconception that people think Miami and Miami Beach are the same and one, but they are two completely separate cities just under the same county. Ah, uh, I see. So the county has 34 independent municipalities yeah. in it, including city of Miami Beach. Uh, and where are we right now in Miami Beach? Miami Beach is technically an island. Yes, okay. exactly. Miami Beach is a barrier island, so okay. it's very much like the Keys of Florida, where the Keys wrap around the peninsula of Florida and acts as a natural barrier to hurricanes and to natural storms to protect the mainland. So, you know, not an ideal place to really be living, <laughs> essentially. That's why the skyscrapers are over there. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. So this is supposed to be a barrier island to protect the mainland, but it is, um, uh, you know, where we live here. So, okay, perfect. Uh, what was your question again? I totally... Uh, so where are we located yes, within we, the island? Yes, we are located in South Beach. There are three different parts of Miami Beach, North Beach, Mid Beach, and South Beach. And South Beach lots is the... Lots of beaches everywhere. Lots of beaches everywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's all beach. <laughs> <laughs> and South Beach is where the historic Art Deco district is located in. And we're specifically starting here on 10th Street because it's dedicated to a very important figure in our history, Barbara Capitman. And it's in front of the Art Deco Welcome Center. So oh, let's, go let's go inside and yeah. say hello to my friends at the MDPL, which is the Miami Design Preservation League. They are an ongoing historic preservation league and they do a lot of amazing work mm. um, because 
Historic preservation is not something of the past. Oh, interesting. That's good to hear. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. Hi, how's it going? I'm we're, here. We're filming live right now yeah, on YouTube sure. for The Urbanist. We're showing yeah. people the history of uh, Ocean Drive. Oh, beautiful home. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I wanted to show him where the headquarters of the MDPL yeah, is. Yeah. So welcome, welcome. <laughs> Happy to be here, welcome yeah. Center. I'm glad yes. I'm glad the history is being kept alive with a so center like this. Yeah. Times, there's always a bill or two on the table. There oh, really yeah, yeah. is. A lady just came in from South Africa and she said they have now taken up every single Art Deco building they've ever had. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. So she came here to get her piece of History, her husband was at a thing, and she's like, I miss it, you know. And then when she left, she's like, We got it. I think she went back with a renewed sense of, of hope. purpose, yeah, yes. like going back and saying, She's like, I can't believe we've just gotten rid of all of ours. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Well, it's good that Miami still has it. Miami yeah. Beach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was just saying that it's an ongoing effort because there's just always, you know. Also, you the Clevelanders, the Clevelander. Robin said something about the. Uh, uh, Rich Carlton now wants to go up. Yes, yes. Hi, Robin. I just mentioned you. I said you said something about the uh, Rich Carlton wanting to go up. You are so fabulous, first of all. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We're live right now. <laughs> um, hi, guys. Yeah. Rich Carlton, that's what I, I, where did I read it? And Daniel wasn't quoted, but it was from us ah. saying something like blah, blah, blah. I can't remember. Yeah, I saw that but recently, too, though. Shit, though. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they want like, to go up 35 stories for affordable housing. Well, oh, they want to the expand or yeah. destroy the building? The rationale. Oh, wow. The oh. Now, oh, wow. Okay, okay. The rationale for the <laughs> That's crazy. Was that that end of Washington, of Lincoln, is not so good. So their rationale is if regular residents hmm. move there, it'll change it. Maybe. I don't know what like, right. I get. Shall see. I, I get Shall all see, sides yeah. of the argument. 100%. I mean, I grew up here in the 1960s, so I, I'd hate to see all of this really disappear. And progress and jobs, and I get all that. You just have to do it in a way that it just doesn't get profuse. Yeah. Exactly. You yeah. know, Miami, like every second, a new building is going up. So take your time, be discriminant. Don't all of a sudden change everything all at once. That's the thing that I hate. Right. Modest progress is what we like need. Modest progress. for someone showing off the Art Deco. Yeah, I, I run the show about architecture around the world. He has a YouTube History channel. as well. Oh, yeah. What, do you have yeah. a car? I don't have a car, but the YouTube is Urbanist Exploring Cities. Yes. Oh, you, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, 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 indeed I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your name? Uh, Ariel. Molly. Very Molly, nice, nice to meet you. Very cool. Very cool. Let's uh, right, check out the rest of the, the Art Deco yeah. Welcome Thank Center. Thank you so much again. Have a good day. Thank you, guys. So there's a nice little museum here that residents can actually get into for free and it's only Ooh, $5 for uh, tourists and then this amazing souvenir shop. So I always take my tourists here during the tour. Is that not right, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Good morning. Good. I have a coffee if you want. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I biked from Little Havana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I always bring my tourists here yeah. because, you know, this supports the mission of historic preservation in South Beach. So no better place to get your souvenirs. And then they oh, also have good. vintage furniture. Oh, they do. Nice. Antiques, all kinds <laughs> Art of. Art Deco and Art 80s Deco. style. Art Deco. Yes. Yeah. It's so, it's so that neat. That is really cool, actually. Yes. Oh, these are for sale. So people can These are these. for oh, sale. Wow, no, so and they change all the time. I'm seeing a lot of new things for the first that's time. That's a really nice touch for a souvenir shop. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is not just stuff made from like, you know, not, not made in China, you know? It's yeah, just, yeah, exactly. This is, this is good quality stuff. Oh, there we go. Exactly to get with my white suit. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. <laughs> Get my Miami vice on. <laughs> yes. All right. See you soon. You as well. Thank you. All right. So to see the architecture. So, I started off with Barbara Capitman, but never really fully w delved into her. So, who is Barbara Bear Capitman, and what is the MDPL? So, these beautiful buildings were been here since the 1930s yeah and the re the rationale for them even being here in the first place um, happened because of a tragedy mm. there was a 1926 great Miami hurricane and completely leveled the entire city of Miami Beach so we decided to take the opportunity and make it into a positive one and rebuild the city in something cool 
and we took Art Deco, we made it our own, but from like the 50s and on, there wasn't much movement here and it turned into more of a retirement city. A lot of World War II veterans came down and retired here because uh, they really enjoyed training here uh, during World War II. If you didn't know, Miami Beach was a training ground for U.S. troops, over 500,000 soldiers trained in South Beach. Oh, fascinating. All of these were turned into their barracks. They used the ocean for rifle training, pools for life-saving techniques, you know, anything they could get their hands on, but they took- Any military bases still here? Yeah, we're very oh. much uh, still a military, uh, you know, county. We have right. the Homestead um, Air Reserve, mm. or the Homestead, I don't know what it's called exactly, but big military base in Homestead um, and it's slowly moved to Homestead over the years you know starting in Miami International Airport and all of that so uh, yeah still big military presence but in that time they really took over the entire city right. of South Beach and this was completely taken over by the military and they loved the way that um, they just loved South Beach so they came over here and retired mm -hmm. here and retired people well they don't usually spend a lot of money and there wasn't a lot of money flowing. Exactly. Like, and the, the economy the was life crumbling. Is be, uh, more quieter, too. Very quiet. Yeah. There's no tourism, no nightlife, no people coming here to spend their money, expensive dinners. There's none of that. And what there area is this that you're. Well, I'm talking about right here, where we are right now. Oh, right, right now. here, right here. Yeah. Right, right no, here. I'm talking about what time? I mean, oh, time period. Yeah. Um, this time period was around after the 50s up until about 70s and 80s. Mm. And here so, we're passing by the Versace. Mansion. Yes, yes. So here we're passing by the Versace mansion. So, um, so Versace actually played a big role in kind of creating a little bit of fame for South Beach. Uh, after this retirement period where everybody came here and all the soldiers were here and there was really no life yeah. in South Beach, um, he really just helped more people around here but um but before i get into versace let's continue sure. talking about hold on sorry okay let's point back here and show yeah. the victor the victor okay Ooh, yeah. Beautiful. yeah so barbara barica pitman let me continue with that uh so all of these buildings were really just not well maintained there was no money flowing in the economy mm -hmm. and developers wanted to tear them all down this was in the late 70s so barbara capitman and leonard horowitz who 11th street is named after. Uh, these two best friends went and documented every single significant detail of these buildings. They took pictures, they noted who were the architects and who worked on these specific buildings and they did that for these 800 Art Deco buildings, took that documentation to Tallahassee and convinced them to designate South Beach as a historic district. And, that, and then they formed the MDPL and these two people mm. saved all of the historic Art Deco buildings. So very, 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 very important figures in our history. Very, very, um, you know, inspirational to see that two people can really make such a big difference. Really, you know, even just one person can make such a big difference. So that's why 10th Street is dedicated to her. The MDPL is in the Art Deco Welcome Center where we first started mm. off the tour. And uh, 11th Street is named after Leonard Horowitz. So on 11th Street, we have the Versace Mansion, which is famously known as the Versace Mansion because he lived here from 1992 until 1997. But this house was built in the 1930s and its formal name oh, is wow. Casa Casuarina. It's been we'll here for a while. That one more time? Casa Casuarina. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So it was inspired by the oldest house in the Western Hemisphere. And that house is, uh, is located in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. That's where Christopher Columbus's children used to live. And so that inspired the design of this house. Versace loved the Mediterranean style. This very much gives Italy. And it it's, probably feels like at home. Exactly. <laughs> so he thought, wow, this is wonderful. I feel like at home. I have a beachfront property. Nobody here. Let me pause you there. Uh, yes, we were talking about the same Versace as the famous uh, luxury fashion brand, uh, yes. by the way, just to clarify. Yes. Um, what were you saying? Um, what was I saying? That he, he felt it. like at home here and he yeah. loved the, the style of design. He loved the style of the design, how at home he felt, the waterfront, and he loved how peaceful and quiet South Beach was. Yeah. So that, you know, may come as a shock, but 
that was the time period where there was only retired folk here. Wait, wait, even in the 90s? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this was a fight. He was kind of he was here right at the end of like the battle between the historic preservationists and the developers, right at the end of it. Um, but it was still very much like there were the, the you know, the retired folk were still living here. Uh -huh. and. Um, and, and they were just, the buildings were getting preserved little by little and things were only just starting to, 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 to get more lively, to re revitalize itself. So Miami Vice was exaggerating certain elements of like the party culture and things like that at the time. I mean, I can't really speak for that yeah. if I'm being completely honest, because uh, I don't know myself. You know, I hear, Tell, tall tales from people that were in Miami in the 80s. I, it was, of course, very crazy because of the drug era and whatnot. Yeah. But for the most part, yeah, it was pretty quiet in that time period where he came down here and he bought this house and there wasn't like much life going on. So uh, he, felt, he felt, for that reason, he felt like he didn't need security detail. And, you know, unfortunately, that's why he met his demise right here in the steps of his home and right. was killed in 1997. So yeah, that's so the Versace Mansion. Yeah. yeah. If you want to so. go inside of there, you either have to uh, rent a room. It is yeah. a hotel room, and the prices range from around eight hundred to two thousand dollars a night. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> that's quite a lot. Or so, you can yeah. stay in, uh, or you can go dine in their restaurant, um, Gianni's, an Italian restaurant, and has it. They've got a After great his first name. Yeah. Yep, yep. Great lunch special. $30 three courses, Monday mm. through Friday. Monday through Friday, oh, and that's And the cool. owners of yeah. it are the same owners of this hotel, the Victor Victor, Hotels. oh wow. Yep, yep, yep. And very so, tall, very tall, big building as well. This one is yeah. pretty tall yeah. for yeah. Art Deco. Original right. 1930s Art Deco is gonna be um, nice and short. Mm. It's gonna like, uh, it's gonna be three floors or less. That's something that's gonna be, like this one right here, the 1200. Yeah. That's a great example. Well, that's a that's a actually that's not a great example at all. <laughs> <laughs> I like We're the style. Get... That that feels more like Art Deco, but the more modern version. Yeah, of it. that's yeah. it's funny that you say that because that's Miami modern. <laughs> Miami modern. Yes, okay, that's, that's Mimo. Okay. That's the style right there, which is a twist on minimalism, with like a spinoff of Art Deco features in it that right. uh, architect Morris Lapid has created himself. So it gives Art Deco, but. It's a, it's a more modern take on it. The tides right next to it is Art Deco, but the best examples that we're gonna get are right up ahead, the Leslie, the Carlisle. The Carlisle is actually where um, the movie The Birdcage was filmed oh, nice. with Robin Williams. And uh, Nathan <coughs> Lane as well. And which one? Nathan Lane was, Nathan the, Lane was the other actor. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So we'll see those, and then I'll tell you about the characteristics of Beautiful, Art yeah. Deco. And then the, does the Art Deco here have its own particular name? Because this is not the same, exactly the same Art Deco that we see in New York City. That is a great question. So yes, we do have a particular style of Art Deco, nautical, tropical style of Art Deco. So it is a little different. Right. Um, and you also bring up a great point. We're not the only city in the world that has Art Deco, but for some reason, we're the most famous for it. Yeah, exactly. So it's not just for some reason, but I'll tell you right now. And Tommy is saying this reminds you of Vice City. Yep. Vice City is based on Miami. Is that a Grand, Grand Theft, Theft Auto? Auto? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so oh, well, wow, these are wonderful examples of Art Deco. Um, and like we were saying, we do have a specific style, the tropical nautical style of Art Deco. So we'll start off with what we already mentioned, the height. The height of the buildings, really nice and short. How did we start building our deco in the first place? After the destruction of a hurricane. After, you know, you, you needing to rebuild an entire city, okay. you're going to need to be conservative with your budget. So if you had a building over three floors, you needed to put in an elevator. Elevators cost a lot of money. And so in order to eradicate that cost, they kept the buildings at three floors or less and that's simply why they're really nice and short. So that's one of the characteristics of uniquely our Art Deco that is like very much just ours. There can be other short Art Deco buildings, but like ours has to be short. You know, that is a requirement of our Art Deco, mm. short height. 
Um, the second characteristic is also stylish in our Art Deco, and, and it was we made it stylish, but it had a very functional feature to it, and those are the ledges that you'll see on top of the windows. Oh, yeah. Those ledges, those beautiful, beautiful ledges that we made nice and curvaceous, because curvature is very important to the Art Deco style. But um, this, this, these ledges not only provide shade to the inside of the building, but they act very similar to an airplane wing in the sense that wind will funnel directly under the ledge. And that's why windows are placed directly below the ledge to really allow a, a nice airflow inside of the building and keep these buildings as cool as possible. <laughs> because remember, in the 1930s, we didn't have air conditioning. No which is wild that anybody would even think to live here without any air conditioning. Especially these concrete buildings can get rather hot. Yeah, especially these concrete buildings. Uh, however, they actually don't get really that hot inside. I feel like they don't oh, get, good. when I go inside, I don't really feel that like that heat. So they must've done something, you know, extra special. Not sure exactly what, but the That's ledges definitely help. That's fascinating. The corner yeah. windows as well. You see the corner yeah. windows over there. That also helps capture a nice airflow inside. Um, also so brightly colored walls as well. Brightly colored walls, although that's not signature 1930s. That started to come about more in the 70s. Okay. And like, or well, more so when we started, yeah, doing some more preservation work and whatnot. And P Picard says that the Carlisle's in the opening scene of Miami Vice. Oh, that's no cool. way. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Let us know whether you're referring to the TV show or the movie. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. I'm going to be good totally point. honest, and I'm revealing a lot about myself. I'm being vulnerable right now. <laughs> I've been a tour guide for nine years, and I haven't seen a single episode of Miami Vice. <laughs> right, right. Not a single one. <laughs> yeah. So that's my home. That's I, been my well, homework for a long I time. I bet guests ask you about it, right? They All the time. All the time. Yeah, all yeah, the yeah. time. And I stay here telling them, well, <laughs> I just, you know, I don't have time for TV. Okay? I'm here living. <laughs> Um, but anyway, let's get to the uh, third characteristic, which is the more exciting characteristic. It's the more fun one. Mm -hmm. So when I consider the treasure hunt of all the three characteristics. So first one, we had to save money. Second one, we didn't have air conditioning. Third one is where we, are, we started to add a little bit more artistry and detail into the buildings. And we wanted to imp incorporate the nautical life around us and and have that inspire our buildings so we added a lot of little nautical features inside of the buildings a lot of artistic details to remind us of ocean life of boat life and what do i mean by that well it can be as simple as circles on the on the building portholes we'll see circular oh. windows we'll see waves and so as we walk along on this on the dive um mm -hmm. i'll be pointing out these exactly these nautical features so let's let's continue let's actually uh, turn around yeah let's go ahead and turn around now we're gonna go the other way it's beautiful so uh, peaceful also here it is uh, and today's a great day because we got this overcast we couldn't have gotten any luckier for this live oh right oh my god does it get really hot uh, it does well, our, our skin would have been searing right now <laughs> if we had the Sun directly on us so this is really really wonderful also, the Tides Hotel, you know, one of the taller buildings of Ocean Drive. Currently, yeah. it's been under renovation or really nothing for the last three, four years. Uh, it was a functioning hotel before then. I remember it when it was a hotel. And each room actually has an oceanfront view because the rooms are all built to be long and narrow on the inside. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. But we don't know what's <laughs> gonna, what's going on there and what's gonna happen. That's a fascinating way of uh, making a hotel so make sure every room is an right. ocean view room. <laughs> it is, it is. It's got a beautiful tile on it called uh, Oolitic Limestone. Yeah. This is a really, really nice tile. It's a very rare and precious tile uh, because you're not allowed to use this tile anymore. You're not allowed to excavate it anymore. Mm. It's very harmful for our Which environment. One? So we're oh, like that the, tile right there, yeah. Yeah, that tile that um looks like how could I describe that? Gary's um these upper floors, are they usually residential or hotels slash um, B and B's? That's a great question. So these are usually hotels on Ocean Drive. Yeah. You can definitely find a lot of residential. There's so much residential after Washington Avenue. So Ocean, Collins and and Washington have more hotel centric um buildings and and like a couple of residential because they've been residential forever so like that yellow building over there that you see oh, that yeah. taller one that is residential 
Um, and that's a, actually a really big residential building. It's a big one, yeah. But that's not, that's, that's one of the only ones. Mm. Uh, the rest are gonna be hotels. Mm, I see. Yeah. And uh, some uh, are these uh, restaurants also, are some of them very old? Mm. That's another great question. So we're gonna get to, we, we're, yeah, we're gonna get to one of the restaurants, the news cafe that has been here since the 80s and really one of the only cafes mm. that has survived that long. All of these have changed over the last couple of years. The turnover in South Beach is crazy high. <laughs> It's, oh, it is interesting. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. I don't remember. I mean, this used to be, this has been yeah. a frozen yogurt shop. It's been a pizza <laughs> shop now. It's been uh, like ramen. It's been all kinds of different things. Uh, Nick Cannon used to have <laughs> Wild and Out here. Now he has it somewhere else. Oh, over here. <laughs> Nick, Con Nick Cannon, the Nick famous Cannon. Uh, Nickelodeon star. Yes. Um, and then what do you recommend for the first time person in Miami? Uh, and we have people from all around the world, a lot of people from Europe. What's the first thing they should eat slash drink in Miami? Okay. Well, if you're in Miami Beach, and uh, since we're here right now, I would suggest that you go to Española Way. Mm. That's where you're going to find some great restaurants. So, you know, not to knock these restaurants on Ocean Drive or anything, but they are very much tourist traps. Like, and it's a very different vibe than like a restaurant that a chef put their love in. Right. You know what, that sounds wrong. I don't these, know. These, pla these places are more for the vibes and the scenery. More for the vibes and the scenery. Yeah. And there's nothing really like special about any of them. Mm. I'm sorry to knock on them like that, but uh, maybe like a couple here and there. The palace is iconic. You do have to have brunch at the palace, okay. 100%. Um, but Española Way has some great, renowned restaurants and an incredible variety. And being that this is an urbanist YouTube. It's also great because it's a perfect little pedestrian only street with these hanging lights. It looks like a strip from Europe and it's gorgeous and, and chill and beautiful. And you really can't go wrong with any of the choices that you make uh, in regards to the restaurant. So that would be, that would be my suggestion. Just go there, whatever you're feeling, they're all gonna be good. I was expecting here wall-to-wall -wall traffic. What happened? What day is it today? <laughs> Thursday? Thursday afternoon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not gonna... It's Thursday afternoon. But you were telling me before the live that this used to be all cars. Oh, yes. And Let's get into that. As well. Yes, yes, yes. So we have the 2020 pandemic to thank for the restructuring of Ocean Drive. And I'll say that a lot of people were not happy with the restructuring, myself included, uh, because for two years it was actually completely closed to car traffic. And it was really? just a haven of, nice. of human beings and the restaurants expanded outwards and there was roller skaters everywhere and bikes everywhere and oh, nice. people doing tricks and having fun and enjoying themselves. But unfortunately, the hotels felt that they couldn't be competitive in price being that their guests couldn't be dropped off right at the front of their hotel. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a very American ridiculous. mentality. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so. It's like, American. oh, we're going to lose money because we have no parking. <laughs> I mean, and look at these blocks, yeah. too. They're tiny. Ninth, yeah. the, the other street is just up tiny. ahead. You know, the walk so, that you have to make is just. How many lanes were there? Two lanes? There or was three lanes? Two, lanes two lanes and yeah. street parking on both sides. What? Oh my yes. God, so it's smaller sidewalks then? It, yeah. No, the sidewalks have remained the same size. Oh, I see, I see. Um, but like, let's see, like That's right crazy. where this curve starts is yeah. where you would get the street parking and then it was dual lane. Yeah, so, so it was closed for two years and then they uh, appeased the hotels by creating one lane southbound and then this dual lane mm -hmm. um, bike lane, dual yeah. directional bike lane, uh, which is still... Really, I'm grateful for it. I'm very grateful for it. Of course, I would have preferred to just completely stay close to cars. But at the end of the day, we got a nice restructuring and it's 20 million times better than the mess and the chaos that it was before, um, before these beautiful bike lanes. And it's cool because you can rent the city bike, uh, which is very easy to rent. They have an app 
and uh, you can drive. You can uh, ride your bike up and down Ocean yeah, Drive. Yeah. yeah, there's boardwalks going all the way down to South Point. The boardwalk goes all the way to 88th, so mm. you can take you can take a really nice long bike ride. You know, take it as fast and as slow as you want. Uh, and it's really just such a wonderful, wonderful place to do so. Okay, right. so we're coming up to one of our first features of the, the nautical features. What do you think uh, this, this building looks like right here? The Waldorf Towers. Look like? It looks like a lighthouse. Good. Yeah, yeah with, exactly. the, with the very top. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so the lighthouse feature, that's something like nautical feature, artistic detail, that's obviously non-functional. Yes, um, good. <laughs> yeah. People would be blinded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course we have the frosted uh, mm -hmm. window tiles. I was about to mention that, yes, that's also very Miami Art Deco. Yeah, I always associate that with tropical architecture. Mm. Because uh, I'm from Puerto Rico, and in Puerto Rico we also have a lot of this type of Art Deco style uh, yeah. in, in San Juan, yeah. Uh, so. We always, I always associate that with my childhood. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is the I Waldorf. Tiles. This is the Waldorf Towers, not associated with the Waldorf Astoria. You know, uh, let's see. No, it's it's not. No, it's, it's not. not. Yeah. And I'm sure that they have gone under some sort of trademark suit. Don't quote me on that. But something did happen with a hotel called the Tiffany, and the Tiffany and Co. <laughs> uh, went after them. But being that these are historic buildings. Yeah. You can't uh, change uh, the name because these are these signs are historic themselves. Even the historic the neon. Uh, neon, yeah. yeah. So and it's hard to replace that, that neon. So right, exactly. So cannot change it. Cannot change it. However, there is like a, a new law that is going to make it easier for these buildings to be destroyed. So that's what um, that's what Molly was talking about with. Uh, the Clevelander and the Ritz-Carlton, those are two buildings right now that are under threat of demolition. And it's just, you really have to be so vigilant, you know, super, super vigilant because these developers will find a way to go through loopholes, to do anything they can to destroy these beautiful buildings and, and chip away at the, the integrity of the city because at the end of the day people don't come to Miami for Wynwood or Little Havana or Brickell or downtown they come here to be in this cartoonish world of <laughs> South Beach and feel like they're in a movie set and and just feel like they're in a completely different part of the world because right. they are there's no place in the world with this kind of architecture with this collection of architecture it's it's really amazing and here we are approaching the news cafe news cafe all right let's cross the street yep. too see it. Let's go take a look, see. We are appropriate old car right in front of it with yeah. the gangster inside. With the gangster. <laughs> very creepy. It. Yeah, it is very creepy. So this is one of the oldest cafes in all Yeah, of this is the oldest cafe. They've been here since yeah. the 80s. And it's the last, it was Versace's favorite cafe. It was Versace's cafe. Yeah. It it's, looks like, still looks like an old diner inside. Yeah, as well. they yeah. just finished a two year long renovation. Oh, there's, a, there's a plaque for with Versace in the front. I can't zoom in because there's guests, but. Oh, yeah, uh, in memory of Gianni Versace, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is the last place that he visited oh, before wow. Andrew followed him from here all the way down to his home. Mm. Yeah. So that's where he would have his coffee every morning and read his newspaper. It's. It's, that is really the only iconic restaurant left of Ocean Drive and one of the only ones that has been here uh, for so long. Besides, of course, here we have Wet Willies. Wet Willies is another one of our uh, <laughs> iconic establishments. If, uh, for the non-American viewers out there, Wet Willie means when you uh, wet, your th wet your finger and put it right into someone's ear. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because some of these places maintain the same sign but they call the, the business is called different yeah, yeah yes great point 100 percent um that happens a lot with like marriott and hilton hotels you'll see those more on the north end of ocean drive but it's true yeah they have to keep the original name face and the original facade mm. colors everything of the buildings. Except CBS over here. 
Yes, this is a very interesting CVS, actually. Another <laughs> Why is historic it building. Oh because my God, this we... is where the first scene of Scarface what? was filmed. Yes. Oh my God. And one of the only scenes that was actually filmed in Miami Beach. Yeah. It, this movie was not supported by the residents nor the government itself, so no. they didn't even give them permits, the production crew, to film. They did it early on in the morning. They rushed the actors, wrapped up the scene, went to LA and did the rest of the movie. Oh, wow. um, and they didn't, people weren't supportive of this movie because Cuban Americans being portrayed as gangsters and mafia members is not exactly something that you would want your culture to be portrayed as. So, Especially yeah. played by non-Cubans too. As right. Even, even more so. Yeah, 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 yeah uh, exactly. So here it says, this is the actual staircase that was used in the filming of the classic movie Scarface. Oh, wow, with Al Pacino. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> but this, is, this is the scene that depicts the Chainsaw Massacre. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I always yeah. like to point out the irony of this being a CVS pharmacy. It is irony. Staying in the drug industry, in yeah. a way. Yeah. Oh, well, they get high on their own supply. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, one legal, one non-legal, you know. All, so here it is. All the same. Something happened. He ran down, I think, in that scene. Yep. Let's take a look at the, the, the small details in the beacon right here. You see those fountains shooting up the artwork? Oh, yeah. Right there. Oh, right there yeah. There's a lot of circles here. The CVS Pharmacy itself also has lots of uh, these well, bubbles. Yeah. yeah, those used to be windows. CVS really got away with a lot of the defacing of this building. It, it does, looks yeah. completely different than what this used to be. Oh, they modernized And even it. this brick, yeah. this brick is so not Art Deco. I mean, it's really, it's really a shame what they did with this building. It looks horrible and doesn't um, match with the rest of mm. Ocean Drive. And we, we could kind of see what used yeah. to be underneath there. Yeah. Did this building used to be blue? Because we see blue. It did. Yeah. It even used to be blue. The, I don't know. How, I mean, obviously they got away with it because CVS Pharmacy has a lot of money. There used to be a Johnny Rockets here. This used to be apartments upstairs. Um, oh. But they really, really got away with a lot of the changes that mm. no other building has been able to get away with uh, since then. Oh, that's that's a big shame. That they should just they should have just kept the same design details. It would have been really the same. They really should have. CBS. And like, are we gonna walk this way? I don't way know. Or they, it would have been really, really. Um, I don't know. They could have used that somehow, like the Scarface. I don't know. But let's go ahead and uh, let's cross the street. So where are all the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris and the? You know, that's a great question. <laughs> They're, they're, they haven't come out yet. They're all hung over. <laughs> they're all hung over. I see. I see. That's, that's what's going on. <laughs> I'm not sure how in Miami Vice the main character Don Johnson wore a suit. It's really hot in Miami and humid. Yeah. <laughs> I should I have don't... brought shorts coming up yeah, here. Yeah, you're wearing jeans. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing that's jeans wild. and, uh, and hot conferences. That's really, really <laughs> wild. I don't. I I own one pair of jeans and I haven't worn it since 2015. Like. So is it really hot year round? Very hot year round. There's no uh, such thing as a winter here. Um, I heard there's yeah. maybe two days of winter. Maybe two long. days. Maybe we'll get some 50, 60 degree weather, <laughs> and that's when we're like, oh shit, pull out all the fall attire. The Avalon, one of my favorite buildings. I think it's, it's so beautiful. The way that they color the trim of the eyebrow edges is really gorgeous and these in particular to the left of the Avalon to me just remind me of Superman so that's where yeah. I get like that adjective of cartoonish movie set feel mm. that that just gives Hollywood it does yeah yeah this looks like a Hollywood set, yeah actually. right all right let's go ahead and look back yeah but um, really um let's take a small diverge to show a little bit of the beach just a glimpse let's do it yeah, yeah. I'm pretty much done with the art deco um, so you guys have any questions yeah, Please feel, ask right now. <laughs> feel free to ask any questions right now, everyone. Um, Susie says, yeah, we're losing CVS pharmacies in NYC. Yeah, they're all closing down. Uh, NYC, uh, CVS also tore down some historical architecture, like two famous theaters. Uh, one of them famous for Tito Puentes and all the major salseros playing in Greenwich Village. And they completely took down all the awnings, the, the sign, everything. And then they went <laughs> under anyway? And they went under anyway. Oh yeah. my god. Uh, Adam says, what is the usual water temperature for the beach? Usual water temperature? Is it a warm beach or is it a warm cool beach? Warm beach, okay. warm. It's usually very warm. This is not like California. They have those cold Pacific waters. We have warm waters. Uh -huh, cool, cool. Thank, thank the Lord. <laughs> And this looks like Universal Studios, Hollywood Studios. In yes, Disney, yes, that's yeah. exactly what it gives. 
Uh, but it's worth coming down here to Miami, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's so worth coming down to Miami. This is the only tropical oasis that you'll find in the continental United States, number one. Um, but we've also got so many micro communities within Miami-Dade County that there's just so much exploring that you can do. It's crazy. Right. And, and you can hire your favorite tour guide, <laughs> kind of the tour guide, to take you around. Uh, where, well, what's your website? Where can people find your tours? <clears throat> you can find me on Instagram, Caro, yeah. at Caro the Tour Guide. Um, and my email is caro the tour guide at gmail.com. And you have set tours, uh, public, or do you also no, have No, I only tours? do private, private tours. tours okay. But I do have a monthly tour that I do for the locals of Miami. Mm. Um, so that one you can find on my Eventbrite. And you can find that on my Instagram. All that information's on in the links in my bio. And, and yeah. Sergio is asking, can you drink alcohol walking the streets? That's a great question, Sergio. No, you cannot. We don't have open carry um, no laws. No open carry? I'm kind of surprised for I a know, city, yeah. city like Miami Beach. Y well, uh, you know... <laughs> I guess it could get of, out of hand. Yeah, too. and it does. It very much does get out of hand. Um, and so the city of Miami Beach over the last couple of years has been working really, really, really hard mm -hmm. to turn our city from being this place... Because, you know, the, the problem with... Miami being a party city and being a party city in general is people don't take care of your city mm. when they come here to party and, and just fuck shit up. Right. They, they don't care about anything. So we, the city has been working really hard to turn this into more of a cultural destination. Um, and so there have been a lot of measures put into place to avoid uh, sort of this, you know, kind of behavior that, that mm. or like um, things that would inhibit any sort of behavior that is mm. that is rowdy. So there was a Fat Tuesdays here that went away. <laughs> um, I think because you know Fat Tuesdays is so iconic for you to grab and go, and they weren't allowed. You weren't allowed to do that. Right. So yeah, no spring break. There's curfews. So you know we really we're really trying to make this more of a cultural destination to come to, and and there's a lot of great reasons for you to come to culture-wise. Um, so and here we have the famous uh, people muscle beach. Uh, working out at the beach. Yeah. Of course, yes, and this then, is our muscle beach. And then the volleyball as well. Newly renovated yeah. about three years ago. Yeah, volleyball. There's great people watching here. It's one of my favorite places to come to and just hang out and look at people and right. just see people living their best life, enjoying the fresh air. And you Sergio, yourself. Sergio also asks, is there uh, public fishing? Oh. There is a fishing, yeah, there's a public fishing pier in Key Biscayne mm. on the Rickenbacker Causeway. Um, and you can also fish off the pier in South Point Park in South Beach here. So yeah, there's a couple places here you can go fishing. And hello Ellen says, I used to live there. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, Tommy, nice to see you here. Uh, Isabella says, Caro is incredible. Oh. Love hearing her passion for the city. Oh. Isabella. If it's Isabella I'm thinking of, I miss you. Love you. Isabella de Molina. De Molina! <laughs> Hello, Isabella! Oh, I was just thinking about her. Um, Ron says, Ariel, you should do a David Caruso before you end uh, here in Miami. So he's referring to CS, CSI Miami, uh, where, uh, where the guy usually uh, goes on one knee and says, oh, wow, we got a case to solve. It takes off his sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, that's too funny. All right, well. Does we'll, Miami Beach have boat tours uh, or rentals? They, yeah. yes, yes. There's definitely well, let's, boat let's tours. Let's take a peek at rentals. the beach and then we'll get back on the drive. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll take a peek at the beach, tell you about, show you this building. And you have until 2 p.m., right? So and, uh, let me know how you're doing on time. Yeah, yeah, I think after that we're pretty much okay. good to go. Cool. All right, let's take a peek. So, if any last minute questions, please, everyone, feel free to ask. Um, while we wait for those questions to pop in, let me tell you about this flora and fauna that we see right before oh, the yeah. beach. These, this is a measure of protection against erosion because this is all filled in land. Mm. So we have expanded Miami Beach greatly and Ocean Drive is where the natural coastline used to reside. So this is all man-made, it's all filled in. This sand is not natural. This is, a, this is not our sand. <laughs> this is not natural sand. No. This is not sand from here, okay? No, we, <laughs> we imported this sand from the Caribbean, from the West Indies part of the Caribbean. Uh, so oh, that, really? <laughs> imported yeah, sand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is it very expensive to upkeep Miami oh my Beach God. because of that reason. If you want to- It wanna, just blows away, I mean- uh, Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, wait. what are you gonna do? <laughs> 
So wait, uh, what, 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 what is the natural sand? Where can one see the original Miami Beach? Great question. Um, is that go... more up north? No, no, you can uh. go right over here to Virginia Key. Okay. Virginia Key, you can find uh, a oh, beach, a more of our own natural state. This and you may or gorgeous. may not like it. <laughs> yes, Dr. it is. Dr. Tatchy says, you are in South Florida. Yes, I am, Dr. Tatchy. Welcome. And Picard says, yeah, this is paid yeah, it is. Yep. Those bah Bahamians are getting very rich. Hmm. Wow, gorgeous. It's nice, and uh, even the iconic uh, lighthouse. Yes. I mean, not lighthouse, um, um, lifeguard. Lifeguard house, yeah, yeah. Those are Art Deco, yeah. It's a pretty calm beach, and I don't see too much commer commercialization. Uh, there's a few kiosks, but I, not, I don't know. I would not crazy amount of vendors that we expect, like, from... Similar to like Coney Island in New York oh, or something okay. like that. Oh, okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Just the, the the chair vendors, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the beach chairs, they're rentable. I yes, say. they are. Okay. Yes, they are. So I think I'm going to buy myself a bathing suit and come back. There you go. Oh, my God, you didn't bring a bathing <laughs> no, no, suit to Miami? No. And you're wearing jeans? Did, <laughs> did they give you a surprise flight or something? <laughs> you didn't know where you were going it's until... Uh, hint, hint, I'm about to go places that are very cold. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> so, no, I did, I did since this was a short trip, I did not pack for summer weather. <laughs> okay, I see, I, I see. I wish I did. I, I, yeah. I'm going to come back because I'm loving the vibes here. The vibes yeah. are immaculate in Miami. And, you know, I, I think Miami is great. I think there's a lot of great things about it. But there's certainly so much that we can improve on, especially when it comes to the urban design of things that will be beneficial for <clears throat> the local people and extremely beneficial for our tourists so that you guys can stop spending your money on Ubers, spend it on our trains and buses, and spend it in our small businesses and our small restaurants. So, right. you know, hopefully that is... Luckily, Uber is not crazy expensive, which is good. But This uh, is true. It's awesome that it is viable to take uh, public transportation here. Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a foundation. Yeah. Is it a great one? Mm, it, it's a foundation. Yeah. So, you know, let's keep working on that and continue to support great projects there's a lot of great projects uh in the works right now so i hope that ariel when you come back in a couple of years and when the rest of you and come back in five six seven years i i hope that you guys are able to take a train from miami to miami beach that would be cool i hope that you're able to take a train up to the hard rock stadium right i hope that you're able to you know ride your bike everywhere um because that would just make miami next level i think to an extent that most people do not understand we would be i mean it's a we're flat we're completely flat i rode my bike here from little havana and yeah i mean it's 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 an easy ride it's an easy it's, ride it's an easy ride yeah it it's a long it's like a highway you have to go through no i went through the venetian I went oh through, i see i see yeah so it's nice and quiet um but it's very flat so it's it's just so doable, so, so, so doable. And Adam is asking how far away you are from downtown Miami. Um, by car, 20 minutes, by bike, 35, by bus, another 35. So not too far, but it is, okay. you know, in the mainland. So you're, right. this is the island of South Beach. When you get to the mainland, you can fi find like five or six more um, neighborhoods that are really, really fun. So it's definitely worth going to the mainland and mm. spending some time there but especially yeah. have a so good sandwich cubano as well in Vapa Vieja. very very important yes. carolina thank you so much for showing us around you're welcome thank you for having me i hope you guys enjoyed one more time what's your instagram and your website my instagram is caro the tour guide caro like carolina caro the tour guide <laughs> <laughs> all right very cool see you guys soon check out go on our tour so you can learn more about the architecture along ocean drive and other parts of miami beach and the city as well Everyone, have a great day. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. And I always do a wave goodbye. Uh, I if love you want to join me, go. Yeah, there we go. Bye bye. <laughs> Adios, amigos. <laughs>